it's another week and we're back for a new episode this week we're talking about supercharging your advertising so that it positions your brand so when you look at the word advertising most people associate it with a process that creates demand generation which pushes inventory which clears products from your shelves and that's not wrong but that's a very base function of what advertising truly is when you go into what advertising can actually do it is a powerful process that enables you to position yourself in such a manner that your product or service seems the most shiniest the most eligible the most ideal product or service in comparison to all your competitors to your target audience and if you're doing your advertising right you are leveraging the power of positioning through it and that's what we're talking about in this episode about fighting tooth and nail for the one resource on this planet that's the most expensive mind space so this is a two part series yeah. this is part 1 of it so what are you covering on part 1 so in this episode we're going to be doing a deep dive into the term brand position what is it all about we're also going to be sharing a six step process by which people can start playing around with creating their own positioning strategy and we're going to go behind the scenes on one of the most controversial campaigns that we have produced which we believe is an ideal example of a campaign that had two roles it pushed inventory and it also positioned the brand very strongly and that was for a company called living walls that's awesome it sounds like a great show let's start it yeah title sequence When you think that something as intangible as design and communications can't really affect your bottom line, you usually end up with marketing and advertising tools that don't help you inherently mitigate your business risk. That's what this podcast is about. A behind the scenes look at how we go about doing what we do, mitigating business risk. I'm Jude Lazaro and I'm Mark Lazaro. And you are watching our weekly video podcast. Let's do this. Searching, searching. Okay. Okay. So to start, but let's get on the same page. What is positioning? Mark and I were once asked by a bunch of friends uh, to take part in in a charitable organization that uh, was conducting a photography course. And during that course, I remember a time when we were throwing out a lot of definitions to explain some of the scientific principles of photography. And you you could notice what is a percha? What is a percha? And what yeah. is what is light? stuff like this and you saw people getting a little you know unnerved about the fact that we were throwing out so many definitions and then he said calm down don't worry i don't expect you to remember these definitions i expect you to remember the concept and that's most important and the same goes with this today so i i battled with a couple of definitions for what positioning is and what brand positioning truly is and i kind of froze on this particular one because it was extremely to the point defining your brand's personality and strengths so that it aligns with the personality and needs of your target market. Now I'd like to show you this in a slightly uh tabular manner which I believe explains this concept even simpler. Here's your brand and it has personality and it has strengths. And there's your market, your very highly specific market, and it has personality as well and it has needs. The idea behind positioning is to align your personality with the personality of your market so that there's relatability there and the next aspect of positioning is to align your strengths so that they automatically complement the needs of your market that's basically what it is quite simple to further uh, strengthen this point i'd like to leave you with an analogy which as indians we associate with and that's the uh, the concept of a matrimonial site so you've got prospective bridegrooms who are trying to find prospective brides Now no bridegroom wants any old bride they want a very specific bride and that's your target market and what are you doing in a matrimonial site you're trying your best to position yourself as the most eligible bachelor out there for your target segment and that's all that positioning is about yeah. positioning yourself to get the right bride make sense yeah. you can come back to this if you ever feel you need to refresh yourself so let's move on to uh, the next aspect of today's talk which is a six step process that you can use to arrive at a positioning strategy. I'm going to go through this fast because it's quite simple. So the first step is determine what your company's capabilities and strengths are. How do you differentiate that? 
For example, if you're a shoe, shoe manufacturer, okay. your capability would be, I manufacture around 10,000 sports shoes a week. So I can make 10,000 sports shoes yeah, a week. That's yeah. a capability. Yeah. Okay. And your strength would be the fact that you possibly have a partner mm -hmm. who is a product designer right. who works in close association with athletes to design uh, specific shoes. That's your strength. Them. Yeah. So now you can take that and your capability and put it together. Yeah. So that's step one. Two, define your market. Get specific. If I had the capability of making 10,000 shoes, I've got to go find 10,000 people that had this specific ath athlete's uh, need worked into it. Yes. Right? That's your need. So you need to define your market, go very specific on that process. Third thing is decode how your competition is positioning their brands. Okay. Yeah. So you've got comp uh, competitive shoe companies and now that you know something about positioning, what are they doing to make themselves look like the most eligible shoe company out there mm -hmm. to the same market? Decodify it and, and keep a list of this. The reason you need to do these different steps is you're never done with one. After you reach point three, you may want to go and tweak two or you may want to tweak one a little bit just to make sure that you're now even more relevant. So the fourth step is create a character sketch for your company. What's a character sketch? Literally what you did in literature class. You were given a character from, say, Shakespeare and said, do a character sketch on this guy. Julius Caesar. Yeah, you wrote down what his personality was, what he did, what kind of bends he had, he was an extremely temperamental guy, or he was an extremely articulate guy, he was, you know, those kind of things that you wrote into a character so sketch. saying do something of that sort for your company. Yes, where you personify your company as a person, as a living, breathing person. What would this person look like? What would he feel like? What, he, what would he be like to interact with? After you're done with that character sketch, you can now move on to step five, in which you compare this sketch that you've come up with to the average personality of the leadership of the company that's running this brand. Now, if at this point in time, these two don't match, then you have a bit of a problem because it should ideally match. But if it doesn't, you need, now need to take the decision to fake this because you can't be, for example, an extremely orthodox and traditional company who is selling skateboards. It's just not gonna work. You're not gonna relate to your market. If you need to get out there and fake it so that you can create a connect with this market, even though you produce the best skateboards out there. You may have the technical knowledge to produce a great skateboard, but you do not, as a personality, align with your market. Now that brings me to step six, which is my favorite of the lot and the one that you could possibly use the most. Summarize all the learnings that you accumulated over points one, two, three, four, and five, and come up with a three-word easy reckoner. What does this three-word reckoner contain? It contains characteristics of your personality that you develop for your brand. Characteristics is the key word here. For example, traditional, formal, and informative. This is a particular brand. I'll give you, an, I'll give you a contrasting brand. Fun, guy next door, nerdy. Those are characteristics, mm -hmm. yeah? Do not confuse these with words that describe your product, like quality products, unique, one of a kind. That's not, not what I'm talking about. You're talking about characteristics. So you're saying whenever you produce an, a piece of advertising, it passes through this personality check, so yeah. to speak. Yes, personality check. It's a great word to use. Personality check to confirm that your messaging aligns with the personality or the personification of your brand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't get confused with your product. This is not the same thing. So uh, let me do a quick uh, conclusion. We, we uh, learned today that positioning is all about taking your personality and your strengths and aligning them with the personality and the needs of your target market. Then we move down to a six step process in which you started with defining your capabilities and strengths. You moved on to defining your market. You then did some homework and decoded what your competition was doing with their positioning strategies. And then you created a character sketch, confirmed how true this character sketch was with the ownership of the company. And then you took all those learnings from step one to five and you summarized them into a three-word reckoner which consisted of three characteristics that define the personification of your brand which you can use as a personality check for any advertising network. That's awesome. So can we, shall we put this to use? Much like, much like a definition of, you know, uh, aperture or shutter speed or ISO. Um, let's start taking some photographs, so to speak, 
and uh, I think that's why you've lined up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Walls. So yes, Can't let's get down to the section of the uh, of the uh, of this episode that deals with living walls in this in this particular campaign. Now, to give you some history on this, uh, Living Walls came to us in 2015, and they had a product that was in the middle of its of its life cycle, and uh, at a time where the markets were really difficult and, and and things were not moving, and this was something we noticed across the real estate market. But they had a unique predicament. You were really impressed when we first met them. We saw the fact that they had lineage. They had done this before. They were infrastructure before this. They were infrastructure before this. They had a team that actually built it. It was in-house. Yeah. Yeah. They were not they were not subcontracting this, they were yeah. doing it themselves. They needed to position themselves because uh, they could have easily overrun this small team with a bunch of leads which did not or could not afford their product. Absolutely. The easiest way to have broken this team was to send them too many leads. Oh yes, it would cloud the system and cause confusion. Yeah. The, the problem was how do you get a qualitative set of leads to that small team? And that kind of aligned with the fact that they didn't have large budgets. Yeah. Because they were mid-cycle, they had already extinguished a large amount of their budgets on previous marketing efforts. And there was not much left, but there was fixed inventory that still had to be sold. And I think the biggest challenge was their excellent product. They had created an amazing product which was thought through which was extremely different from the competition. It propagated a lifestyle which was, you know, people can come home and entertain guests. And it, it was a very specific market, a very high-end niche market which needed positioning. The brand had to have positioning. Without, without giving away too much, because we have an entire episode on this, um, that's sort of the, the problem statements that we were faced with. So that's all we have for this episode, but don't worry, we're not leaving you hanging. I'm going to leave you with one of the ads from the campaign that we're going to go in depth with on next week's episode. Do not. Do not. Do not watch this ad. Please don't. It's YouTube, you can skip it. Unless you are the kind of person who delights in the details. If you're the first in a group to try something new, if you instinctively hold the door open for others. Cringe when people unbuckle their seat belts as soon as the plane lands. You have a crappy day when you miss morning yoga. Find yourself hysterically elated over an algorithm. <laughs> if a relaxed evening means all your Simon and Garfunkel songs on shuffle. If you appreciate subtlety, despise mediocrity. If you love things that just work then maybe, yeah. Yeah, maybe you should be watching this ad. You need to watch this ad. Especially if you're someone who's looking for an awesome apartment. Awesome apartment? Awesome apartment on the outer ring road designed to just work. If you are that person, then you need to watch this ad because Living Walls, and that's the name of the developer, has created exactly that obscenely awesome apartments. Visit livingwalls.in or just click on this ad. And please, don't tell anybody about this. Unless, of course, they're a lot like you. <laughs> In which case, please tell them. You're the kind of neighbor we want. Yeah. You are the kind of neighbor we want. Right, so you're teasing everyone, huh? <laughs> no, but actually, if we get started, it's going to take another another 15-20 minutes to cover this point. So, don't forget to subscribe, like, and follow us on all of our um, social media platforms. We are on Instagram, we are on Facebook, we are on YouTube. Obviously, you're watching us on YouTube, and then, yes, we are on uh, LinkedIn as well. Mm, depending on which flavor of us you want, you'll have to choose from those social media channels. Um, I like the fact that we're breaking this down to a real world, you know, uh, story. And uh, I can't, can't wait to do next, uh, can't wait to do next week. So.